So The Deep by Nick Cutter was kind of my headline horror book for the month of October this year. Last year that was The Troop also by Nick Cutter and after the success that was The Troop I wanted to continue with this author and see what else he had to offer. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you what The Deep is about and how I felt about it overall. So The Deep is an interesting novel because it kind of seems like two different things are going on throughout the story. The general premise of this book is there is a disease going on in the world called the Gets. That's what it's referred to and it basically makes people slowly forget things. It kind of starts out with first maybe you'll forget about your keys then maybe you'll forget something bigger stopping at a stoplight then you'll forget how to breathe how to eat all of these things and then at some point other things also start to happen to you so it's kind of this worldwide plague that is going on and we have our main character luke who is living up in the world and he has a brother who is basically a genius think of a, a da vinci level kind of intelligence and he is working on a cure but the kind of twist here is he is working on that cure at the bottom of the ocean in the challenger deep the deepest part of the ocean so obviously there are challenges getting to and from the bottom of the ocean and when a message comes in from the bottom of the ocean asking for Luke to come down and help his brother, Luke kind of jumps right in and heads down to the bottom of the ocean. And that is kind of where the story begins and starts to take place. So let's go ahead and start with some of my overall thoughts going into this. I actually ended up giving this book a two star rating, which means for me, I didn't really like this. And this was kind of a disappointment for me after the highlight that was the troop for me last year. I've never been one who is super into reading horror stuff, but Nick Cutter set like a really good foundation for me last year with the troop. I gave the troop four stars. I think it was a top 10 book for me last year, everything. So going into this book, my expectations were pretty high, even after seeing some other people not as uh, ex excited about this book. There was also the added element that my girlfriend I uh, thought this book was scary enough that she couldn't finish it. She was reading it and she just got creeped out enough that she completely stopped and DNF'd it. And so that was like another little fun element here for me that I needed to finish it so I could tell her what happened in the end. So all of those things together, I don't know. I don't, I don't even think this was a hype problem. I just think that in the end, I, I ended up having a lot of problems with this book. This is also another one of those books where I think the first quarter of it is so excellently done that, man, it, it, it it goes off a cliff uh, about a third of the way through, maybe even a little bit more into it, but I was, you know, hooked, hooked super, super hard. And then I just could not wait for this book to be over. I, I don't want to say I hate read the last little bit of this book, but I was so excited for it to be over. I definitely wanted it to be done uh, well before it was done. So that is kind of my indictment of this book. But uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more in depth about it to see that maybe it is something it, that will work for you. I always want people to read a book if they think it's exciting. Don't just take my opinion as gospel. I'm just a random guy talking about books on the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with the characters here. And most of the characters here felt really half-baked. Even our main character, Luke, he is the character we spend most of the time, our, our, most of our time with and everything. But even he... I, mean, I didn't find him to be super compelling. I, I, there were some, definitely some things that happened in his life that we learned about that I did feel bad for him about. But overall, I, I guess I just didn't care enough about him. Uh, and then we have uh, his brother is another main character throughout here. And talk about a character that is basically impossible to connect with. One, I think part of that is the point of this book is his his role in this book is to kind of be that disconnected person that you can't really relate with. So I, I understand that aspect of it. But when you have a character that is so cold, condescending, and just unrelatable, like I said, uh, it makes it hard to care about anything that happens to him. And it also makes some of the motivations that other characters make around them make less sense, right? It makes a lot less sense for a character to really want to do something for them. So in this case, I'm talking about it. It was hard for me to believe that Luke who we learn all kinds of things about their relationship as brothers to want to do something for his brother. And I don't know, it was just hard for me to believe at multiple points that this is the rational decision that, that Luke would be making towards his brother because of just the person that he is. Uh, the only other real character that is uh, involved in this story is a character named, oh, am I gonna mix it up because there's another female character. It's either, oh, and they both start with the same letter, which is like the worst thing for me. I think it is Abby, but I think this illustrates it. I just finished this book like two days ago and I'm already mixing up characters' names, but there's another female character that comes down to the bottom of the ocean with Luke. And once again, she is so shallow and surface level. Uh, there's not enough time to really establish anything with her. There's big moments without her, just all kinds of things that, I mean, she's there. I'm kind of glad she was there. She was a nice mix up between the two brothers, but in general, it didn't really matter uh, at all. And I think that's unfortunate. I'm not even necessarily like a super character focused reader. There are plenty of books where I think the characters are the, the worst part of the book, but it doesn't bother me. I think some of that comes from some of the sci-fi I like. Characters don't need to be excellent if other parts of the book really, uh, you know, make up for some of that. I will say uh, there is also 
also a dog that's in this book, which is kind of fun. So if you want to talk about, you know, a positive when it comes to the character, I think the dog was kind of a nice little element thrown in into the story that just kind of, I don't know, made you question some things that were going on maybe. But overall, the, none of the characters like are going to be ones that I think of very often. So one thing I do want to mention and I'm going to talk about, normally I would talk about like world building and stuff, but this isn't that kind of book. But what I do want to talk about is the atmosphere of this book. I think this book does do a really excellent, excellent job of making you feel claustrophobic and just feeling how oppressive the dark is at the bottom of the ocean. That's obviously a big proponent of this book is the claustrophobia and just like the absence of light and I think that is something that is really one well done in this book it's probably the thing that is the most well done in, in the entire book for me personally I think that as somebody who like will see those like videos of people cave diving and stuff and just be like there's absolutely no way I could do it there that same kind of claustrophobic feeling of like being in a small space and not only just being in a small space but being in a place where if something goes wrong it is a catastrophic kind of thing like it's instant death right if you're at the bottom of the ocean and something goes wrong like you die we, we all saw the submarine that happened uh, unfortunately with uh, I think it was a couple billionaires never going to see the Titanic like that is the kind of scale you're talking about here and I think that kind of a claustrophobic oppression was really good and then just the absence of light uh, is it's not something like we like obviously the sun goes down every day right but there's a difference between knowing the sun's going to co come up again in the morning and being at the bottom of the ocean where the sun legitimately cannot like penetrate and so even when you have like a light i don't know if you've ever seen videos of like when they're super deep down in the sea but they'll have like this super bright light and it illuminates like five feet around them and then it's just pitch blackness it's one of those things that i, I like to see but just like that feeling that dread of just like the unknown right behind that light uh all those kind of elements were really well done here in this book so that is one of the positives i wanted to talk about here and then the last thing i want to talk about here is the plot and uh, unfortunately this plot seems really straightforward right you have the disease uh his brother is going down to help him figure out what how to cure the disease and you think you just kind of go down and and deal with that and unfortunately that is not what happens this book is full of weird uh, flashbacks in time, weird kinds of, honestly, they, some of the dream sequences that happen in this book feel like acid trips. You don't really always have a great understanding of like what is real, what isn't real, what's going on. And then the plot just devolves into, and I can't talk about it too much because I think going in not knowing, obviously I don't want to spoil anything, but I think the way the plot goes just, it was such a nosedive for me, absolutely. It's just not what I guess I wanted from this book. I think there are many other ways that I think it could have been better, but I think there are going to be some people who, if you really like um, Lovecraftian horror or maybe some of that like spatial horror, <laughs> this might be something that you end up gravitating a little bit more towards. But for me, this just took some really weird turns. Uh, we, we spent so much time in flashbacks that to me really never ended up mattering all that much. I feel like there were pages and pages of like worrying about things that had happened in the past that could have been like a page and the emotional impact still would have been the same because i never had the emotional impact even with all of the time spent on trying to you know paint this picture of something tragic that happened or some of the traumas that have happened to characters and it didn't matter how much time we spent we probably would have needed a significant uh, more amount of time to really you know feel more for the characters and just more of the characters being better developed in general for me to really care about all of those things and so each time one of those things happened, it felt like we just deviated from the plot, right? The, the whole gets thing is supposed to be like our big anchor point, And I feel like it's pretty much abandoned very early on and not really even the point of the book anymore. And maybe that's a marketing problem. Maybe if this book was marketed differently uh, and just given a different way to present it, it would be something that I would have had better expectations for and maybe would have enjoyed more. But for me, this is unfortunately a miss. I do still like Nick Cutter's writing in general. I think, like I said, the atmospheric parts were really good. There are some like body horror and some animal cruelty stuff again here. If you have read the troop, you know that um, he's not afraid to involve animals in, in things. And that's here again, so, if, you know, red flag for some people. Uh, but for me, I think it's really well done. That's another part that I think he's done well. And so I will definitely be reading more from Nick Cutter. Maybe I won't wait all the way until October of 2025 to do it, but he is definitely an author that has earned my trust. This is one of those books that even though I didn't have the best time with, I still think it is decently done and like the actual writing is good enough that I want to see what else he can do. I think this is more of a, a premise issue with a strange plot and I can forgive 
characters not being being great like I mentioned earlier just because of some of the other stuff that I have read in the past but that is my general thoughts on The Deep let me know if you have read this book let me know if you've read any of Nick Cutter's other stuff I would be curious I don't actually know how many other books he's written that are out that I haven't read I know there's at least one but I think there's probably a couple more so if you are a big fan of him definitely let me know where I should go next with his reading or if you have any other good horror recommendations for me I have one other one that I'm reading here in October before I kind of wrap that up not that I'm going to completely abandon horror I do like to mix one of those in every now and again, but that's all for me, and as always, have a good one.